Roger Travis, back at you with more classic chess from Classics and Ancient Mediterranean Studies 1103. If we go on from that last position to this one, what do we have? Put it in the contest forum and enjoy the lecture. So now I'm going to go on and relate this special relationship between Odysseus and Penelope, their like-mindedness, to what I think is a wonderful modern example, the film Gross Point Blank, directed by George Armitage and starring John Cusack and Minnie Driver. To set this clip up, you need to know that the main character, Martin Blank, played by John Cusack, left home on prom night ten years before the movie takes place without telling his girlfriend Minnie Driver, whose character's name is Debbie, and joined the army, and that later he became an assassin. And, in fact, he has returned to his hometown, Gross Point, Michigan, which is a pretty tony suburb, first of all to uh, fulfill an assassination assignment, but second of all to attend his 10-year high school reunion. And what we're going to see here is the very special homo frisune between Marty and Debbie. And I think there are a couple of parallels between the way this film works and the way the Odyssey works that give us some insight into how Odysseus and Penelope's special homo frisune comes about. <laughs> This convenience store has been built where Marty's house used to stand. So like Odysseus, he is returning home to a home that has been radically changed. Compare the clerk here to the suitors and the rest of the regular people on Ithaca who, who don't understand. Stop me. No, I'm not all right. I'm hurt, I'm pissed, gotta find a new job. Who don't understand the violent drama that's unfolding around them. WGPMFM. Deborah, it's Martin. Hi, Martin. Listen, that thing didn't go as I planned. Uh, seeing you, it didn't really go as I planned. And I'm oh, it's just as I planned. Well, I'm wondering how you are, and I'd like to catch up with you if that's possible. I don't know if it's possible. Well, okay, let's catch up. Well, I thought maybe we could go someplace and talk and... We have a little talk all day. Well, then just listen. Maybe, uh... Maybe we go to you know, the Hippo Club, say, in 30 minutes? Are yeah, you okay? By the way, is this uh, live or, you know, we being broadcast again? Not right now, but... So notice two things. First of all, the contrast between... You seem very nervous. No, no, I'm not. It's just... 
the peaceful world of Debbie no, and the violent that. world of Martin. So you have it. Let's not talk about that. What if I come and talk to you? Okay. Put the spotlight on you. Sure. You got married. That's hard to imagine. And second of all, Debbie's wit. Uh, can I ask you a question? I mean, it's too personal. You don't have to answer it, but what happened? I think, I think I married him to get away. Didn't like where he ended up. Who was the guy like? Well, he didn't matter. Forget about that question. But uh, I'm sending him to me. You know, when I joined the army, some marriage sorts. Oh, on prom night. Psychotic. <laughs> How could you possibly join the army? I just, it's something I felt like I had to do. It's hard to explain. I mean, I know it doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. Do you know how much time I spent on, on this masochistic cycle just trying to figure out what I'd done to drive you away? Nothing. Yeah, well, you tell me that now. A little late. Then I thought you'd been murdered or brainwashed or... At least I hope that's what had happened. I'm sorry to disappoint you. So, you know, come on, spell. What did we do in the last 10 years? Uh, well, you must have worthwhile experiences you want to tell me about. Bad experiences. You met people. Bad people. <laughs> You're pathetic. You know what you need? What? Shakabuku. You want to tell me what that means? It's the swift spiritual kick to the head that alters your reality forever. Oh, well, that'd be good. I think. <laughs> so listen, I was thinking I could pick you up from the reunion around 7 o'clock. You go. Know, Wait a minute, let me get this straight. You are asking me to go as your date to the reunion? Yes. <sighs> Unbelievable. Well, you know, what the hell? You know, I'm not even planning on going. Really? Really. I'm, I was just going to be mean about him on the radio. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Besides, yeah. it's, it's going to be depressing. Maybe. But listen, uh, if you want to go, I can't think of any reason why we wouldn't go together. I can. I think you can open up, forget, forgive a little, and I think it'd be good for you and I'll be on time. Showing up would be a big step. Oh, I'll think about it. Really? Oh yeah. my God! It's Marvin and Debbie. It's me, Amy. Amy. Yes, you're still together. Oh, Ty, you were the coolest couple. Oh, 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 there you are. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you want my drink? No, no, no go. Oh, no, Debbie, I, I love your show. It's so timeless. Yeah, it does run a little long time. Marvin, are you here for the reunion? Sure. Where have you been these last ten years? Yeah, Mark, where you been? You look great. Thanks, I work at Kentucky Fried Chicken. You do not. I do. I sell biscuits and gravy all over the South Lane. No. Mm -hmm. You're so funny. He's a funny guy. You know, Tim, my husband. Oh, listen, why don't I get you to another drink and you guys can just catch up. Oh, could I have a stoli with three olives and onion? Yeah. Oh, I'll have what she's had. So what I want to suggest is happening with the Homophrosune, both in Gross Point Blank and in the Odyssey, is that it comes about with two circumstances in place. One is the outside world of violence that one of the characters is involved in. And the other is the sharp wit of both characters. Now, in Odysseus and Penelope, we have exactly the same dynamic as we have in Marty and Debbie in Gross Point Blank. Marty is involved in a kind of violent world that Debbie actually doesn't know anything about. Odysseus is involved in the violent world that Penelope doesn't really know is going on. The fact that both partners are so intelligent, though, makes it possible to have a kind of space for like-mindedness that creates uh, a dynamic that I think everybody can recognize is really wonderful and really embodying of a cultural truth value that this kind of like-mindedness is something that we all aspire to. It also creates one further effect, which is used for laughs in Gross Point Blank, but is used for poignancy in the Odyssey, which is a kind of hermetically sealed like-mindedness between the two partners, such that anybody looking from the outside doesn't understand and is bound to get wrong what's going on. And that's what happens with the Amy character in Gross Point Blank, who is just so easily deflected both by Marty and by Debbie, which makes them laugh and makes us laugh. In the Odyssey, this is what happens in the poignancy of the interview between Odysseus and Penelope. They're the only ones who understand each other, and anyone looking from the outside has no idea what's going on. But in the Odyssey, there's this further notion of 
them not being able to connect the way we would like them to. And of course that pays off at the end of the Odyssey when Penelope and Odysseus finally do get together.